right now we'll be discussing something that is extremely very, very important to you right about now. I'm going to open the phone lines sometime on the show. I would want you to also interrogate the guests that we have on the show today. The focus is on electricity. And we are asking, we are all aware that, um, yes, many have argued that um, there is tariff, there is a um, subsidy on um, on electricity, uh, which is what government has also also said, but sometime in 2021 we did hear that um, tariff, I mean the subsidy, had been removed and all of that. But you and I know uh, the concerns we face with the power sector in Nigeria. So on the show today, let's look at these concerns around return of subsidy of on, on tariff if it is sustainable by this government. You all understand that um, there is a dearth of funds and then there is a high rate of poverty in Nigeria where if you ask any Nigeria today, they would wish that um, power is even free. How much more an increase in uh, tariff? Uh, I know there are policies around increasing tariff within the power sector, but then uh, let's look at it holistically and see how we can move the sector uh, forward. We're being joined this morning uh, by Adetayo Adegbenle. Tayo, Tayo is uh, the executive director of uh, Power Up Nigeria. Uh, Tayo, so good to have you on the show this morning. Good Tayo. morning, David. Good morning. It's always, always a pleasure, pleasure having you here. Talk to us. Talk to us. It's so, always a pleasure to talk about this. How, 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 how do you want to assess or appraise? Let's use the word appraise. Let's appraise the power sector for a start as a good foundation uh, for this conversation. All right. Um, I'm sure a lot of people that are familiar with the work of Power Up and you know my advocacy work, talking about this intervention, will probably say I'm going soft. Mm. But no, um, the more knowledgeable you are in something, the more you're able to take a more balanced position. Position, right? And when you say balanced position, you're able to consider, oh, why is David working like that? Maybe it's the shoe that's not comfortable for him. Can I give him something to balance, you know, stuff like that. So I, I, I have been in this sector enough to see, you know, from government ends, government ad, uh, arguments, of stakeholders end, and of mm -hmm. course, the primary constituency, you know, that I come from, which is the consumer's end. And um, I would say this, that the last 10 years of privatization, those 10 years exactly, that the discourse took over in November, yes. you know, the last 10 years of privatization has been one of um, trying to catch up with the past. We had, prior to 1999, we had over 20 years of no investment at all, no, no progress in the, in the sector, uh, decay, infrastructure decay and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And the power sector reform started in 1990, 2000, 2001. Yeah. And then we've had 10 years of investment trying to come in. We've had 10 years of trying to catch up with, you know, um, in, the infrastructure the decay and everything. So if, if you're looking at it from that which, perspective. Which we, we've, not, we've not caught up yet. We are, we are, we are coming from. We've never scratched. We are coming from a from minus the, from the axis of, of the graph. Yeah. So, and so it's going gonna, it's gonna to take us a while. We need to fill up the hole that has been dug. We have a borehole of about 120. Which feet. was what we thought that the privatization would fill up. That was the idea of privatization. Yes. But now, you see, as against government sole proprietorship prior to privatization, we now have different sectoral players. Now, the, 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 the generation is with a private entity, and part of their own initial... Uh, contract or engage, in terms of engagement was that they should recover capacity and mm. stuff like that, which they are doing. Mm. I mean, one of them that I'm very proud to identify with at any particular point in time is the management of um, Kenji Dam, mainstream energy. Kenji Dam as of 2014, Kenji Dam was not contributing anything to the national grid because all the turbines were down. Mm. But as you speak today, Kenji Dam is doing over 1,200. Who gets the credit? The private sector. Okay which will give credit to government eventually because they, 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 they are the initiator of the privatization process. Okay. Right? But it, this is possible because the private so the sector has come in to pump in their money. And they are still doing, I mean, uh, recently we went to celebrate the assigning of one contract with one Chinese company to revamp some or to bring some new uh, turbines in as well. So that means uh, eventually, if we continue with Kenji Dam like that, Kenji Dam will, will give us the full capacity that was designed 
this was because private sectors were involved. Mm -hmm. Then we have other similar generation companies as well. Now, one of the weakest link, or the, the, the easiest to bash initially, in, you know, some time ago, was um, transmission. But interestingly, in the last four years, transmission has seen lots of investment going their way. I mean, we have lots of substations that they are building, the ones that they are, you know, upgrading facilities here and there. But because this thing is not like uh, a car that you drive into a filling station, you pour fuel and you zoom off. Power sector is not like that. Usually, the lifespan of, of, of an average con uh, project in the power sector is like 18 months. So, it take you to, you know, for you to before it comes on stream. Mm. And like I keep saying, very soon we're going to see a lot of the transmission projects coming on stream between now and June of 2024, because a lot of them has already gone advanced. Now, the, 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 the tail end of it that we are all, the retail end of it that we are all familiar with are the discos. These are the ones that give us power supplies every, you know, right into our homes. Mm. Yes, um, while I will not give them, I will give them pass mark. Maybe that pass mark will be 40%, okay. right? I would, this is because they also have also faced some sort of constraint, and which I believe also is also leading us to the conversation that we're having this morning. Mm -hmm. Because now, if, if, if you have been following the discourse, one of the things that they keep saying is that they are not allowed to charge cost-reflective tariff. What it means is that there is a cost to generation, there is a cost to transmission, and there is a cost to distribution. And there's also a cost to inefficiency. That is the point. Now you see. So for for I want to get there. You see, yes. we we are sacrificing. We are sacrificing efficiency now. Balance this. Hold on a second, David. Yes. We are sacrificing efficiency now on the altar of subsidy. Because these people are not allowed to charge the cost of the goods they are, they are selling, mm. right? They are. I mean, it's business. So the question is, how are we able to balance that conversation? And you see. As at 2020, when um, the service-based tariff was introduced, that was the idea, to phase out subsidy in the power sector. Thereby, we can ask demand and say, all right, now you have your full cost for your product. You are charging your full cost for your product. What is the excuse that they're giving us now for not being efficient? So if you want to bring down the hammer, then you cannot bring down the hammer. Mm. Now, part of one of the things that we are also not considering is this. The subsidy, I mean, between 2015 and 2020, that the phase out of subsidy was started, we have spent over two trillion in subsidizing the power sector, right? By government. But you see, part of the problem is this it did not allow investments to be made, right? Government is owing. It's not as if because they say we are going to pay that subsidy, so tomorrow morning they will just turn around and say, yeah, your invoice. Some of these invoices are still pending with federal government. They're not, they're not paid in day to day. So it now becomes, okay, fine. How can we manage? You know, where are the places that we can supply power to? Where are the places that we, when we supply power to them, we will be able to recoup, recoup some money for us to. You know, see, there, there, is, there, is also, there is also this funny idea when I hear people speak, well, I, I was of oh, that school of thought before, that these people are just ripping us off. They're just making money and they're just spending any money out. But you see, yeah, there was a period that it, was, it seemed like that. But again, there was a period where the government said, you know what, we can't allow you to just be taking money and not be accountable for it. So all the accounts were escrowed. Right? So the discos go and take the money. Then all the market players come in to come and take whatever percentages that belongs to them. The Jenkos, as I'm speaking to you right now, are complaining that... They are at no point ever paid the true cost, um, the, their, their invoice value for any month. Mm. You understand? So, you know, and there's a, like, there's a lag of like three months. Yes. Um, it's a, so there are issues, there are also administrative issues that, you know. In as much as I want to agree with you on the fact that uh, uh, we're not paying a cost reflective tariff for yeah. power, uh, but then. I would also want to stand on the place of the fact that the investors have not proven to be inefficient. One of, one of, one of the inefficiency that, that stares, stares us in the face, in as much as our, in, in, even though I know they have, they have a, an argument on that, is a metering. Let me, let me, let me, is, is a let me speak to that, your, that comment. Yes. Right. 
The presentation was, start, was started in November 2013. Yes. As of November 2013, 13, um, 11 discos were taken over by private sector. By January, July returned. They returned July disco back to government. So we had 10 that run for another. In fact, then Kaduna came, Kaduna came in a year later. So we had nine that started. Then we had two that were pending. Then. Now, out of these 11 discos, are you aware that the only disco that still remain the core investor that started in 2013 are just like three? Not even up to three, it's just two of them. Ikeja and Eko, Abuja, because of the mismanagement, because of the inefficiency Good. of the people that took over the core investors initially, they were out of it. Same for Kano, same for Kajuna, same for Bini, same for Potakot. Yola, Yola, Yola celebrated their two years this December of privatization. So that means the previous eight years it has still it had, it has, it had, it had remained with the government. So yes, we can, all these are, if you're looking at it superficially, they remain the problem. But is government doing something about it? Are the regulators doing something about it? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Are they reacting as fast as maybe we want? I mean, somebody like me, I will just wake up one morning and tell you, you're not performing, you get out. But are there consequences? Don't forget that it cannot be done like that. Yes. There are terms, there are conditions, you have to consider legalities, you have to consider, you know. But by the time government took decision uh, about two years ago now, right? Yeah, two years plus now. Yeah, going to two years now, you know. About five discos were let go. The management of the five discos were restructured almost instantly because they were, they can, they were unable to give account for the money they are spending. They are not, and basic um, achievement, they are not able to reach it. Now, let me now show, let me now, let me now, let me now say it from another angle. The, dis, the discos that we said they had stable management, Ikeja and Eko. Interestingly, the uh, Ikeja Electric uh, MD was talking at the last tariff review and was telling us that by, by the end of 2024, that they want to celebrate 100% matron under their franchise area. What does that tell you? That means they have more metal people by percentage than almost every other person. And I think Eko, Eko said something similar as well. You understand? We want to compare it to a place like this, a place like Yola, right? That just took over two years ago. Mm. The metering gap in Yola is about 80%. So that means less than about 20% there are about people are metered in that place. Are metered. 20% are metered. Less than 20% are there are metered. Are metered. You can't compare that to Lagos that is telling us that so, in the next so 18 months we are going to do 100% metering. My point, my point is this, um, Tayo. Yeah. Um, metering is a bane of um, extortion. That, I mean, lack of metering. Lack of metering. Lack of metering. As it's been seen as um, uh, a way that um, consumers are being exploited, or ex there's a lot of ex exploitation going on. I mean, I was a victim of that mm. some years back, where the officials come and ask me, what are you using in your house? I have two air conditioners, I have uh, this, I have and that, I, I have it. that. Mm. And they give me a bill and tell me this is my with my regular bill, hmm. and it's still ongoing in certain areas today. I'm sure they are hearing and they are watching you and they are listening to you right now, so I'm sure they'll do something about your case. And I, I, really, <laughs> I really want to hope that they do. I have, in my course of work as a journalist, I have gone to investigate, you know, an allegation on this matter, hmm. particularly the first access. Access, yeah, that's under a coup. Some years back, Yeah, you know. I know that the metering process had improved, but I can still tell you that there are a large number of, of Nigerians. I don't want to domicile it to Lagos, but there are a large number of Nigerians that are still going through what we are discussing here. Yeah. So if you come tell me cost-reflective tariff, how do you affect that when you don't even have meters to accentuate or to exactly tell your, your consumers what they are using? So See, if someone says in one month he pays thirty thousand naira, the next month he's getting ninety thousand naira. You're asking, how do you explain this cost-reflective tariff? All right. Again, um, I made a statement earlier, and I'm going to repeat it now. We we are sacrificing efficiency in the power sector 
on the altar of subsidy. So who do you blame for that? Is it the consumers or the regulators or the government? As we are talking about this this morning, yes. the fault is strictly on the government's table. And I will explain. Um, Tayo, hold on. I'm going to open the phone lines. I, I'm sure um, you must might want to be a part of this conversation. Let's get your thoughts on this. We're discussing the power sector. We're discussing efficiencies or inefficiencies within the power sector. We are looking at if government can sustain subsidy into the power sector. You and I know that that is more like a no-no. If government is going about removing subsidy on virtually everything, you begin to wonder why power should be different. But then we're also asking, given to current realities in Nigeria, can you, can you afford uh, the so-called self, I mean, cost-reflective tariff within the power sector? Let's get your thoughts on this. Tayo is here with me. Uh, most likely, you will, you will try and make some sense. Or uh, I'll probably give, uh, give an answer to your question. The phone lines are out there on the lower third. Yes, time. All right. Um, let me try and do some number crunching. Go ahead. You know, the idea behind that is for us to give us an idea of the magnitude of the, the subsidy that we pay, pay. we've been paying. Yes. I mean, like I said, for instance, between 2015 and 2020. But, but, but do you know the subsidy in itself is not a bad thing? No, 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 no. See, subsidy itself is not a bad thing. That's provided yes. it is achieving its aim. Yes. And again, that's the idea behind the number question I want to do for you. Mm. Right? The subsidy was, 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 was is an idea that was introduced so that um, the not well to do, yes. the, I don't want to use that word poor, but I think that is the technical term for it. Yes. You know? Mm. I, the subsidy is supposed is, is designed was designed originally to to, to help the poor yes. to breathe to manage. Yes. But when the subsidy you are paying is no more benefiting that, those poor people. Okay. Of let's, what benefit of what use is, is, is it? Let's let's speak with Danjuma right. from Plateau State. Danjuma, good morning. Welcome to News Up. Good morning. Good morning. Speak to us. Sixty seconds, Danjuma. Okay. Uh, about the issue of uh, electricity. So you can see sometimes. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Speak to us. We can hear you. Okay, this is Benjamin calling from Jos. Um, issue the issue of electricity regulators or what the uh, the the yes is saying in the studio. Okay, you know what the problem is, Benjamin. You are still listening to your television set. We always advise that when you when you call and the handlers pick your call, you turn on the volume on your TV set and listen to us via your telephone whilst you're speaking to us via your telephone. When you do that, we'll have uh, this seamless conversation. So if you want to call us back, Danjima, please do that. We're waiting to get your contribution to this conversation. We still have Tayo here with us in the studio. Tayo, yes. Yeah, so if... if we we'll do if, some if, number crunch in a while. Yeah, if, 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 if the subsidy was supposed to benefit the poor, Right, and it's now no more benefiting the poor, then there's a problem. We said that in oil subsidy, and today the poor, the poor are poorer when subsidy was removed. Because the argument around oil subsidy was that it, the, 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 the rich are benefiting more from, from the subsidy than the poor. But they are. But today, the Number poor, one, they but, are. But, but, but today the poor are poorer. You need to understand something. Um, I am one of those that argued for removal of subsidy in, 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 for the petroleum sector. Yes. Right. And but with a caveat, you need to make alternative provisions. The government removed full subsidy, but has not rolled out any palliative for the, for the people. So that is a different argument. Okay, so let's go back. Now, to with this. electricity, yes. right? It is three. I'm going to ask you, how many ACs do you have in your house? I have about four. You have about four. Yes. I don't have any. That does not mean I'm poorer than you are, but what it means is that your consumption, your demand is higher than mine. Now, anybody that is poor, I doubt it if AC will be his priority. on the list of his priority. So if you that can afford to run four ACs in your house, I mean, if you can afford to buy four ACs in your house, then running that, maintaining those four ACs should not be a problem. And according to Niger uh, the, 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 National, the National Bureau of Statistics data, one of the things that NEC, I understood that NEC did, because I had this conversation with them as well, was that they had looked at where they call the, the rich catchment in Nigeria. That's we have the bands. Now, there's a, there's a band exactly. that's a category. Good. So yes. if, you look at, if, you look at, if you look at the distribution in power sector, right, 
What if you look, what, have, what they have done is people that live in the highbrow, high income area belts like Lagos, like Abuja, you know, uh, like Potakot. What they have done with the service based tariff that they did was to remove as much as, as much as possible subsidy. So you are paying in Lagos, you are paying more uh, a tariff that is closer to the true cost of electricity mm. in Lagos mm. than in places like Yola or Benin. Okay, so you, you help me understand how I am paying. I get I, I get one hundred and fifty one of the two point two units every time I buy. No, 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 let's do, no, 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 I think we lost that call. So, yes. All right, let me, let me, okay. So, for instance, the cost of tariff was at Q1 2023, the first quarter that was between March, uh, and between January and March. The average tariff is about 68 naira for the mm -hmm. right? And per kilo, per kilowatt hour, per kilowatt hour yeah. right? But what neck the regulators were they allowed to make? as total put to get to consumers was on the average 59 59 89 cobalt per kilowatt so as at between march and uh, between january and march that was q1 what the regulator has done was to reduce subsidy as much as possible to as low as 8 naira 53 cobalt on the average now if you, if you drill down a bit further right i'm going to use um a co yeah let me use eco eco disco right the cost suppressive tariff for eco disco was 62 naira and four cobalt per kilowatt hour. Mm. And on the average, what you are paying, what um, an average uh, eco disco customer were allowed to pay was about 59, 59 and 49 cobalt. So the variance there was just 255 cobalt. See how close it, it is. Mm. Six, uh, 62 naira to 59 naira. So about 2 naira 50 cobalt as variance. Do you understand that? Yeah. So what it means is that if government had allowed the, because of the, tariff the, re, the, no, the re, last review that was done in 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 uh, uh, July yes. to go through, what will have probably happen is that a code disco would not have probably been paying or receiving any subsidy for that. Do you understand? Yeah. This is because they are in in a high income belt, you know. I mean, we have the statisticians understand all those you know grainy details. Now, for a place like Yula Disco. True cost of electricity per kilowatt hour to Guya Disco is 147.55 cobalt per kilowatt hour. Right? But the allowed tariff was 69 naira, 65 naira, 99 cobalt. Do you know what the subsidy is there? 81 naira. Yeah. See the difference? Yeah. Now, if you do the number crunching, the total paid to Yula Disco eh, was about 7.82 billion. In subsidy for that quarter, mm. right? Mm. Meanwhile, guess how much was paid to uh, Eco Disco? 2.04 billion. You see the, you see the gap? So, Yola Disco, that is a low income area, paid, received higher uh, subsidy. in subsidy, seven, something billion, um, 7 point something billion, compared to Eco, which is 2 point something billion. Now, after the review in uh, the tariff review in July, again, people that understand it, I'm going to, let me try and explain to, to, my, to our listeners. There are factors that uh, they use in doing the tariff review. For instance, the foreign exchange figures, mm -hmm. um, inflation, inflation yeah. uh, the inflation figures in the US is part of the calculation. Cost of gas. And the cost of gas. So we have a, a, what we call um, a weighted average cost of tariff, you know, electricity. In Q1, dollar was pegged at 474 naira. Yeah. As at Q3, which was July, dollar was officially 780, close to 800. But in the market, it was actually 900. In fact, as a day, that crossed 1,000 and came back. Mm. As a day. Inflation that was 24% in January has gone up to 28, 29% as at that quarter, quarter three. Because it was shortly after the removal of first subsidy. So the 
average true cost of electricity as we are presently, if I don't know as we are presently, as that Q3 was 111 Naira. So, here you see the difference. Now, another you know, the, the funny thing about this is that that difference wasn't much initially, but the dollar that crashed, the power sector don't have control over dollar. Mm. They don't have control over inflation. These are where we expected government to be able to fill in the gap and deliver. So if you're talking about efficiency, we need to look at what are the root causes of, the, or causes of this thing. Now, we keep saying that we want investors to come. How will an investor come when an investor cannot make his money? <laughs> we have an interesting caller that yes, I want us to listen to from Plateau State, just Plateau State. Ada, good morning. Welcome to News Up again. Ada, uh, calling from Dr. State. Yes. Hello, to your guest there. Yes, I'm listening mm. to him. If you ask me, I don't know, Nigeria should not uh, cut off my head. What, 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 what I feel that this um, subsidizing uh, electricity is not sustainable. And I don't even think it's the subsidy that is a problem of Nigerians. I can tell you for free that. If there is efficiency in that sector, and then uh, the Nigerians are, uh, are, are good for it, they will be ready to pay once we have sufficient electricity. You know, and then, uh, 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 you see, when you have a sufficient electricity, they cannot pass on whatever to the consumers. And everybody will be happy, because everybody will be making, uh, making up for whatever. So this idea of saying we are going to uh, I mean, uh, continue to subsidize it, and we know we cannot subsidize it, and there's, there's no efficiency in the area, no light, so the companies are leaving and all that. So that's what is important. Then let them meet us. Let them meet everybody. The experimental giving is, uh, is wrong. You know, so let them do those things. The subsidy is not the issue. Let them stop subsidizing it and let them, let, effectively, let, let, I think it's on paper. They have allowed, uh, I mean, uh, uh, they have decentralized it. And, they and, uh, are not allowed to good morning, and, uh, their own electricity or whatever, looking words and Hello, use, use and, what and, they can. I don't know, like hydro or whatever. And, uh, That's the way to go. Or it's a left out of a Nigeria or Nigeria. And, uh, hold on. And, uh, please hold on a second. Hold on, hold on one Hello? second. Yes? Please, which part of Jaws are you calling from? I'm calling from, uh, that is uh, the, the Jaws town. That is the Jaws south. I'm not, I'm not around that uh, area where they're excited. If you are in just south, you are probably in Bukuru, uh, you are probably in Rayfield or Bukuru Axis or do or... Okay, I'm, I'm in the Rantia area, in the Rantia area, which have light. Like, you are in Rantia area. In yeah. You are in Rantia that has 24 hours power supply. Yeah, sometimes we have uh, three days running, you know, like, but sometimes we don't have like... Yeah, if there is fault and it's not reported on time, for yes, I'm, I'm aware. Or or and Ada, I'm not about the tariff, because I'm enjoying the light, you know? I can't, I can't run any gen. You don't, uh, my own gen is uh, diesel. So if you, if you, if you run the gen, you discover that what you are paying is still not. So I prefer the light. Let, let them stop this something and allow the thing function well. People cannot make uh, the, the, the disco and the rest of them. I'm How glad. They survive? All right, I'm, I'm, I'm glad with your submission. Okay. We need to see. Let them stop Thank the you, subsidy Adam. thing. Thank Thanks, you, Ada. Yeah. Sorry, I'm asking Ada like that because I also live in Jos, Ada. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I also live in Jos. And I understand that the just scenario is a bit peculiar. Just is an average is the place where on the average you have 24 hours power supply. As in, I mean, I don't think there's anywhere in Lagos that has that kind How of. How many factories do you have in Just? What are you producing? It's in Just? not about factories. I think it's more about uh, the the well, to some extent, the kind of investment that, that has been made in Just into the power sector in Just. In, yeah, into that. Okay. Let's yes. let's let's speak with another caller. I can't you. From Abuja. Good morning, Akeju. Welcome to News Up. Yeah, good morning, Dave. I think this is an interesting topic this morning. Please go ahead. We can hear you. Well, the issue of subsidies on tariffs on the electricity doesn't arise at all. I think they should be talking about the change and the delivery of services to the people. And if the electricity is well connected and well delivered at the right time, I'm sure quite a lot of consumers are ready to pay the dry and appropriate price. I mean, there's no way you can compare the cost of electricity with the cost of running generator as a businessman. No, it's not possible. If the electricity is right, if you are efficient in what you are doing, if you give an appropriate price, 
Mm-hmm. The problem is what is the appropriate price, Akeju? That is what we are negotiating right now. What is the appropriate price? We, we all understand the fact that uh, it costs so much to run your gen, to buy diesel or to buy, to buy fuel. Uh, sometimes I, uh, when I do a calculation, I almost go crazy. Mm. And I wish mm. that I've had constant power. Probably would have paid maybe less than 50% of what, I've, what I used to run my gen. You know, on, on, you on know, I was in, I was in the market that. yesterday, and everywhere I go, by the way, I don't have, I don't have a gen in my house, and just, and I never, I, I don't need it. But I am paying the costs. So I was in the market yesterday, I was going, I was hearing generator going off everywhere, you know, climbing staircase, there, you know, everywhere. So I was wondering, and I told my friend, I said, I wish I could walk into Ikeda right now and strike a deal with them. Because if I'm able to give that market 24 hours power supply, yes. guaranteed, they don't have to run their gen. Now they can work more efficiently. They'll be quiet everywhere. You can be a bit safe. Yeah. Because that does alone is enough to, 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 to drive you insane. Yeah. Then you can now help. It will now also boost activity boost in the market. Productivity will go up. But the question is this. What the equipment that Ikeja Disco probably need to install to give them a better power supply in that place? Are they willing to pay for it? So that's what we're saying. Let us let us can remove. We, can we have? Let us remove can, this first. Can we have, uh, let us remove this subsidy. <laughs> on, on, I'm sorry. <laughs> let's let's move this subsidy on electricity tariff, right? Yeah. So that when you receive one kilowatt, you know you are paying for one kilowatt. Mm. Then you they are demanding. Then the discos are able to now return the investment. So if they want to go and borrow money from anywhere they can borrow money and install meters for you hmm. if they want to you know uh, you understand because we, because we, we, have to, we have to wrap up as quickly as possible no i mean yeah but but for for, for me i, I think most importantly yes our federal government we all understand the pulse of the federal government right now there's no money there is no money so they say so if we continue so they, so, to so they say there is no money see don't let us deceive ourselves there's no money even though we are even mis- misusing some of the monies that we have how what is the percentage of the money that we are misusing? Forget about all these headlines and whatever. What is the percentage of the money that we are misusing? There is no money. Let us accept that fact, right? And if we're able to, because if we continue to say government should carry subsidy, government will start, will continue to dig a big hole mm. to fill the last one. Yes. They have to dig a bigger one to we fill the next one. one. So we keep digging we ourselves. We keep digging ourselves more into hole. holes. Okay, let's speak with Gabriel from Benue State. It's like um, uh, Benue State. Uh, good morning, Gabriel. Speak to us. I have been all those things and I have my own house in Makodi. Mm. And we are having a situation where somebody is just using a television and a ceiling fan and is being compared to pay 15,000 monthly. He is not paying for what is being used. I have a house where I have we have prepaid and some of them doesn't have prepaid. And those that have prepaid, they are managing their own prepaid, and those that doesn't have, they are still paying the same amount that they were paying even when the whole tenants were using uh, uh, analog. So the issue is that we should try to see how every household have access to a, a, a prepaid, because it, it's only when the prepaid are being made available that we'll be talking about subsidizing because as we speak now, me as a person, I'm saying Nigerians are being strangulated. People, they are squeezing money from the pockets of poor Nigerians in the name of electricity. Because nobody, um, I, I can assure you, 98% of Nigerians are paying for electricity. They are not using for, they are not using. So at what point can we have those meters available for Nigerians to make use of them? Oh, that is when we we'll start talking about subsidizing this uh, electricity tariff. Gabriel, thank you so very much for your thoughts. It, it's obvious that all our speakers are on the same, on the same, on the same. Let us move these yes. things. They want Let's to be so that we can. So even they, want government, to, they want efficiency. Even governments will now be able to demand for efficiency. The government cannot demand for efficiency now because they know that they are creating the biggest bottleneck. The subsidy that they claim that they are paying, they don't even, when they want to pay itself, it doesn't come on time. Mm. It's within the books that there is package shortfall. Are you, are, you, are you suspecting some foul play, even with the subsidy? Like, um, like, like we saw in the see, first... See, let me also say, with the, with the first, like in the petroleum sector, there is no way we can easily 
quantify any subsidy that is consumer based, consumer based or consumption based. Yeah. You know, if you want to subsidize, why don't you let subsidize cost of production? So they reduce gas. Let them work on the economy so that f f forex, yes. naira dollar exchange can come down. Yes. Let us. One of the things we can also do is say, let us sell gas in Naira so that we can now do our economy in Naira. So there are other options that the government can take that can make this thing easier. But unfortunately, the poor that are so even supposed to be benefiting from this thing are not the ones benefiting from it at the end of the day. So why don't you just to remove this thing? Then the government cannot close their mind or close their eyes and demand for efficiency. For, now, funny enough, we have another review circle that we're supposed to do this, 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 uh, uh, this January. They have not allowed it. In the federal government, in the, so, um, so, uh, the budget for 2024, they made provision about, for about 350 billion for subsidy on electricity. But in reality, the projected subsidy that we are looking at is, is going to about 1.6 trillion. So that's another level of inefficiency again that they have already dug out. So why don't you just allow this subsidy to be, you know, completely phased out, or for net to continue phasing out gradually? I mean, in respect of. In, because of the economic situation of the country. Yeah. But we cannot continue to manage this thing. What we are doing is that as long as we continue to maintain that subsidy, efficiency will continue to reduce. Look at the first sector we are talking about. If you want to buy fuel at 580 or thereabouts, you can drive into people that are selling that, but there will be a queue. Yeah. But look at people that are selling at, at higher than 580. You, walk in you drive in and drive out. It, I find you know, look at the issue of, it's only in Lagos that you are buying fuel for 580. In Abuja, the minimum you can get is 617. Very long queue. But if you're ready to buy at 670, you drive into another filling station, you buy your fuel, and you drive as you continue your journey. You know, Toya, we, 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 there's, there's still so much we can discuss. Uh, uh, you so know, I think we have to do something like a three hours program, one of these. A three hours days. program. We just relax, we we'll do we'll, tea, we we'll do coffee, we'll, and we'll look for. We'll be looking, maybe, maybe we'll, we have, we'll be projecting. Where we have Toya TV. And then we can do three. No, I, you can talk to Ben Bruce. This is something that she should be interested in. Oh, fantastic. He, he was my chairman, fantastic. so I mean, maybe I should give me a call. All right, Tayo, it's a pleasure having you talk to us on it's this. It's always uh, a pleasure talking matter. about all these things. Uh, we look forward to touching base with you, Absolutely. with you again. Uh, obviously, you like talking about the, the power sector, which is your fault. I have devoted my life to that. Interesting. Tayo Adegwinle is uh, the executive director of um, Power Up Nigeria, yeah. an advocacy group of working the company, looking at um, the concerns within the, the power sector. It's a pleasure having you, Tayo. It's always a pleasure to be here. So